it's actually a rare thing that happens when people actually hear you. I mean, seriously, or when you hear somebody, this is a class on listening. Can you hear? Oh, hear ye! Just in case, I thought I'd help you one more time. People recall 25 to 50% of what they hear. You know, that means that when this class is over with, you're going to probably remember 25 to 50% of what I said. Like, I kind of thought my words were important. Didn't you think they were important? Oh, by the way, I'm going to give you a test later on. I think you better think they're important. The other part of it is that you're going to have the PowerPoints to look at as well. So I'm kind of giving you a little extra help to remember what was said. But what that also means is that your boss, your coworkers, and your customers, they're going to retain half or less of what you said. It's not very cool to think that your words are so unimportant that people forget most of what you have to say. Good listeners are good managers. It's a soft skill. Learn how to do it. We're going to talk about it a little bit here. And we call it empathic listening. It really is fabulous when you can sit down, listen to somebody. And then, so let me get this straight. As I understand what you're saying, you're saying, da -da 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 and repeat back in your words what you thought they said. They have a chance to correct you, but you know what? No matter what happens, it's certainly one of the greatest compliments. You're listening to them so much that you're trying to remember exactly what they say and see how it impacts you. That's a big deal. It's a compliment. The person will appreciate it. It's called empathic listening because you in that moment were fully present. You were being mindful. Mindful is kind of a term that we use too much, but the reality is being fully present to gain trust and respect of that individual is a big thing. When I first was dating, I had an affliction. My future wife, one time, we walked into a place and the television set was on. And you have to understand, I have an addiction. No, it's not drugs and not booze, not gambling. It's television. I was trained that when the parents wanted to be off and doing something on their own, whether cleaning the house or something else, they parked me in front of the television and I'd sit there. Like most of us put our kids in front of the television, even today, or some type of computer screen or some type of iPad. And we all sit there. We're focused in on this digital screen, focused in that's the most important thing. My cell phone, I need it. Put the cell phone into my hand or I will have addiction. My hand's shaking already. I'm frothing at the mouth. My eyeballs are rolling. I need my cell phone. Yes, it's a problem that we have, but we bring it on ourselves because we park our children in front of the digital screen. And no matter what happens, so she sat down and a couple of times she sat down there and I'm watching television. And she would go like this, put her hand, finger on my chin and go like this. I'm talking to you. And finally, I got the hang of it. And probably the shock therapy helped on top of that. But the reality of it really comes down to the fact that a lot of us have a hard time being fully present with that person in front of us and just turning off everything else that's out there, all the other stimulants that try to draw our attention away and focus in on that one person. Being fully present is the biggest compliment. It also is the listening skills that will help you on your career success and effectiveness and also a lot of job satisfaction, not just for you, but for the people that are around you because you're part of their success because you care because you listen to them is a big deal. There's barriers. Um, almost all of them, you got physical barriers. Some people have hearing disabilities and never admit it. They don't want to because that would mean they're getting old. Okay, poor acoustics, noisy surroundings. Sometimes you need to get out of the noisy place and go find a place to talk to focus in is what somebody's saying. There's psychological barriers. Sometimes you have this issue over here of there's a person that was bad to you in grade school and that first name stuck in your craw and your coworker has the same first name and you hate everybody that has that same first name. I have issues like that too. So maybe you need to go see a therapist on top of it. But anyway, the whole aspect of it is sometimes something happens where we have this internal prejudice, whether it's a name, whether it's a race, whether it's a culture, whether it's something bad that happened to us, where that person you're automatically trying to box them out or ignore what they have to say because of some prejudgment you have inside of your own head. You need to open up those ears to listen what they have to say because you may learn something totally profound you never heard before and never expected. Language problems. 
Unfamiliar words can destroy the communication process because they don't have any meaning to the person that's listening to them. Sometimes I had a friend of mine and she was she was she was Japanese and she would came here to the United States at the age of 14. And she made this one, uh, Jeannie made this statement to me. She says, David, your puns and your jokes, they don't really resonate with me. I was born in China, so your puns and jokes really, they just kind of go over my head half the time. And it's center kind of nonsense. So it really doesn't matter. So you don't need to do that anymore. And I made four more puns and sure enough, she didn't get them. So anyhow, then a whole aspect of those words, at least she told me that she wasn't getting it or didn't care one or the other, that aspect of it. Sometimes we say something that's emotionally charged. And all of a sudden, somebody, boom, it's like a bomb goes off in their head and you're sitting there saying something and it kind of it sets something free or something off and it changed the whole topic or their demeanor in the topic. Sometimes there are these nonverbal communications that happen, these distractions, wild clothing, speech mannerisms, body twitches, radical hairstyle. Sometimes there are just things that happen that help us to be distracted from what that speaker is saying. It happens all the time. I just got distracted. <gasps> the other part is, here's the reality is, our brains are wired to be able to comprehend 300 to 450 words per minute. And with that, okay, the speakers talk at the most 125 to 175 words a minute. I'm probably on the higher end. We get the people bored. There's a difference between the rate of our speaking and also the rate that people listen and think. It's called the speech thought differential. We simply can't talk fast enough and clear enough to sit down there and occupy that person at that huge amount of 450 words a minute. There's some people that give fake attention. I've seen it happen and I really find it irritating. You're talking to them and you know it doesn't matter what you're saying because they're thinking about something else or what they're going to say to make certain that their thought is more important than your thought. And those kind of people, you just kind of take a switch and, and you turn them off and everything else because they, they don't really give a, a care about anything you have to say. They're faking attention and people can see that. They do it with nonverbal communication. Sometimes there's grandstanding. Sometimes we tell to listen carefully. We're just waiting politely for the next pause so we can have a turn to speak. Sometimes that happens as well. So it's a, a big thing. Some of the powerful listening skills, stop talking, control the listening environment, adopt an empathic attitude, and that includes focusing in on the person that's talking. Sometimes we have to distinguish between facts and opinion. That's a big deal. If somebody is just spitting stuff out, did they really research it? Is it really truthful what they're saying? Today's world is really hard. They may think they're saying the truth, but they saw it someplace and it's not really a validated opinion out there. It's just somebody's thoughts out there rather than actually good research. Capitalize on lag time. If there's a pause, sometimes a good time to dive in. Listen between the lines and validate what is the emotional part that you're they're conveying over there. Because if there's emotions involved with their talk, you know it's very passionate to them. Take selective notes. Provide feedback to them. So hear ye, hear ye, stop talking, be an empathic listener, listen. People think faster than we talk. Take notes. People really like it when you're paying enough attention, you're taking notes in them, and then provide them feedback as to what you heard. So hear ye, hear ye, be a good listener, because that is one of the biggest compliments and also one of the best ways to communicate well. Take care.